Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Josh's Coding. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at getting an enemy to chase the player. So, coming into this, you don't need any prior setup or anything uh, besides having your player, obviously. But anything else is not needed. We'll cover it all in this tutorial. With that said, let's just hop straight into it. So, the first thing you're going to have to do is come to your Blueprint class. And you're going to go ahead and create a character, just because a character is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around, which since the AI is going to be chasing the player, it's going to have to walk around. So we're going to call this enemy BP. And we're going to go ahead and open it up. So we are just going to go ahead and throw a cube in here as our enemy, uh, just so we can see it, since we don't have a static mesh or a skeletal mesh to use. So we're going to go ahead and add a box collision to our enemy. Um, you don't necessarily need to do this. I just um, personally prefer having a bit of collision detection on the enemy outside of just the sphere collision. Because if you're just using, or sorry, the built-in capsule collision, then this whole like half the cube is going to be in the player before it's actually hitting him. So I just like to add a bit of extra collision on the outside of the box to make sure the cube doesn't go through the player, or whatever mesh you're using doesn't go through the player. So once you have the cube and the box, there is a few things we have to do. So the first thing we can do is come to character movements. And from here, we can actually look at max walk speed. So by default, it is at 600, which is also the default walk speed of our player. So what we're going to do is make the max walk speed 300, so it's half the speed of the player. You can set this to whatever you want. Uh, I don't know how fast your player is moving or any of that, so you can just set this to whatever you feel is best for your game. But we're going to set it to 300. So once that is done, you can actually come over to the event graph and we can start making our functionality. So we're gonna keep it really basic here. So we can get rid of begin overlap and um, begin play. And we're just gonna be using event tick. So what we're gonna do from event tick is we're gonna drag out and we're going to call AI move to. Now it's important you use AI move to and not actor move. Make sure it is AI move to. Then what you're going to do is get your player character. So get player character. And you're going to set this as the target actor. So the target actor is going to be the player character. And as far as your um, pawn goes, you're going to drag out from pawn and you're just going to get a reference to self. So now you have the pawn, which will be self moving towards the target actor, which is the player character. Another way you could do this, which some might argue is better, uh, instead of doing it this way, is from get player character. You could get actor fiction. And then you can drag the location of the player actor into the destination. And then it will work pretty much the same way. Really is up to you which one you want to do. I'm just going to show you both ways and let you decide. And then the acceptance radius is how close the, uh, um, the pawn is going to get to the destination or target actor before stopping. So the larger the acceptance radius, the farther away it will stop, and the lower, the closer it will get. So we're just going to leave it at the default 5. And that is all you need to do inside the blueprint. And for those of you who aren't aware, event tick just means that every frame we are going to be calling this. So every frame the enemy is going to be moving towards the uh, player's location. So again, just compile, save, and you can get out of there. Now when you're in your actual world or your 
seen. What we do have to do is we have to come over here to the little place actors tab. And we have to add something called a nav mesh bounds volume. And this basically creates a path that the AI can walk in. So the AI can only walk inside of this cube. So as of right now, the AI can move in here, but it can't move anywhere over here. So what we're going to do is come over to our nav mesh bounds volume, and we're going to increase its size. So similar to collision, you don't want to scale it. You want to come down to brush settings, and you want to increase it through here. So we're just going to make it cover the entire platform. So the enemy can now walk through this entire platform since it's all being covered inside of this box. Now we can throw down our enemy BP in the world. And if we play, you can see it's going to constantly come for the player to move around and it's going to constantly chase us. Now, of course, you can expand on this and you can make it, you know, deal damage to the player using collision when it hits the player. Um, if you want, we can go over a tutorial in that. Just let me know down in the comments. But this is how you set up basic AI move to. So I hope this helped you get your enemy chasing your player or realistically just getting your AI to move to any location. And if it did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any feedback on how I can improve my future tutorials. I'm always looking to improve them. And I hope you have a good rest of your day and good luck with your games.